there! Welcome to Raylene Math. In this video we will take a look at distance and directed distance. Distance is defined as the amount of space between two objects. So if we were to place an object at a position of 3 on a number line and a position at 8, the distance between them is 5 spaces. It doesn't matter if we start at 3 or we start at 8, we get the same distance. To calculate distance, we subtract the smaller number from the larger number. And so 8 minus 3 is equal to 5. Distance can't be negative. However, if we do subtract the smaller number minus the larger number, such as 3 minus 8, we get a negative value, like negative 5. We can still use this calculation to get distance. We simply ignore the negative sign, and the distance is just 5. In mathematics, we call this operation of ignoring the negative sign of a number the absolute value of a number. Therefore, when we take the absolute value of negative 5, we ignore the negative and we get an answer of 5. Meanwhile, the absolute value of positive 5 is also equal to 5 because when absolute value is applied to 0 or a positive number, there is no change in the sign of that value. We use this vertical bracket to represent the absolute value symbol. By contrast, when we talk about directed distance, it depends on which point or object we begin the measurement from. So in the case of coming up with a directed distance from 3 to 8, 3 is our initial point and we move towards or in the direction of the object located at 8. We still see that there's a distance of 5 spaces, but there's a direction, 5 spaces to the right. And we can write that numerically as positive 5 spaces. So we start at 3 and we move 5 spaces right to get to the final position of 8. Similarly, to work out the directed distance from 8 to 3, we start at the initial position of 8 and we move towards the final position of 3. We are still moving a distance of 5 spaces, but we're moving to the left, and we recognize that the directed distance is negative 5. So there's one calculation for the directed distance, depending on where you begin and where you end. The beginning number, where we start from, is the initial value, and where we are going to is the final value. Therefore, the directed distance is the final minus the initial. In mathematics, we have another term for directed distance, and it is called change. The symbol for change is the Greek letter delta. And so if we want to calculate the change, say along an x-axis, we could say that the change in x is given by the final x-coordinate or value minus the initial x-coordinate. And so this gives us the change either from 3 to 8 or from 8 to 3, depending on who is the initial and who is the final value. What is the difference then between distance and directed distance? They both involve subtraction and their answers both involve a difference, but in one case we're allowed to have a negative and in the other case we're not. So we really need to know when it makes sense to have a negative answer and when it doesn't. Distance measures the amount of space between two objects, whereas directed distance measures the amount of space between the objects and it identifies the direction from one object to the other. And so the directed distance is concerned with starting at one initial point and moving to a final point, whereas that's not important for distance. So the direction doesn't matter for distance, but it does for directed distance. And as a result, the order of subtraction doesn't really matter for distance as long as you just take the absolute value of the final answer, so that we only have a zero or a positive result. In the case of directed distance, the order of subtraction does matter because we need to make sure we get the correct sign for the final answer. So we could have a negative or zero or positive answer for directed distance. And we can calculate distance using subtraction and absolute value. When we take the absolute value of larger minus smaller, or the absolute value of smaller minus larger, we get the same result. And it's the same as taking the subtraction without absolute value as the larger minus the smaller. In the case of directed distance, however, we can only calculate with subtraction as final minus initial, regardless of which value is larger and we can never use absolute value when we want to calculate the directed distance because we cannot ignore the sign of the difference. Let's take a look at applying distance and directed distance. Here we have two points that we want to connect with a line, and we can form a right triangle out of that line segment, the hypotenuse. 
in part A and B, we're asked to determine the horizontal and vertical changes from A to B, which means that we want the change in X and then the change in Y. When we look at going from point A to point B, there are actually two right triangles we could draw. The one that's given where we go down and to the right. We could also come up with a triangle that goes to the right and then down. Either way, we find that the delta x is going to be positive since the x-coordinate increases and the delta y is going to be negative because the y-coordinate decreases. We have a third point here at the right angle which has the same x-coordinate as point A and the same y-coordinate as point B. So to calculate the change, we take the final minus the initial. The final x-coordinate is the x-coordinate at point B and we subtract the x-coordinate at point A. When we do this, we have 3 subtract negative 5, which gives us 3 plus 5, which is 8. So we have that delta x is equal to 8. Similarly, we calculate the change in y as the y final minus y initial. The y coordinate at point B is negative 2, and then we subtract the y coordinate at point A, which is 4. This gives us negative 2 minus 4, which is equal to negative 6. And so we have that delta y is equal to negative 6, which makes sense since the y coordinate is decreasing. Now that we've got the delta x and the delta y, we can work out part c, which is the slope or the gradient, which is the rate of the two changes. It's defined to be the rise over the run. Now the rise is just a verbal way of describing the change in y. Then we divide by the run, which is the change in x. The rise, or the change in y, is negative 6, divided by the run, which is 8. And we have a common factor of 2. And if we factorize negative 6 as negative 3 times 2, and factorize 8 as 4 times 2, we can reduce the, the 2s and get an equivalent fraction of negative 3 over 4. This is simply saying that we would go down 3 and to the right 4, and we can repeat that process to get similar triangles. We could go down 3 over 4 again, and we can continue to land on points that would lie on the line segment AB. The next part of the question asks us to determine the distances for the base and the height. Well, the base is nothing more than the absolute value of the change in x, and the absolute value of 8 is just 8. We don't need to, ch to change the sign of positive 8 in order to get distance. So part D asks for the base, which is 8. Furthermore, in part E, we want the height of the triangle, and the height is the absolute value of delta y, which is the absolute value of negative 6, which is equal to 6. The last part of the question asks us to calculate the distance of the line segment from A to B, and that distance from A to B is nothing more than the hypotenuse, so we can use Pythagorean theorem, which says that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. When we do this, c squared, or the hypotenuse squared, will be the altitude, or the height squared, plus the base squared, which is equal to 36 plus 64, which is 100. And therefore, c is going to be the square root of 100, which is equal to 10. So we have that the distance from A to B, or the hypotenuse of the right triangle, is equal to 10. Stay tuned for more videos where we connect distance and directed distance to slope, absolute value, and similarity of triangles relating to trigonometry. If you like the video, click like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for checking out Raylene Math.